Hey folks, welcome back. In the greenhouse here, just taking a look through. Just watered everything. Uh, tomatoes, peppers made it out here. Looking really good. Cukes, looking amazing. Actually, these are um, going to be pickling cucumbers. Arugula. I don't even know if you guys can see that. I can't see the camera. So that's arugula. Uh, more tomatoes. I think those are pumpkin, and then these are the squash. Look at that, hey? Coming out good. Not sure what's causing this. Maybe too high humidity in the greenhouse. It's pretty toasty in here, and I haven't hooked up my box fan yet to get the air movement in here. Uh, just finished going through the garden doing the weeding on uh, the rows uh, I don't see any carrots yet but I did see uh, peas beans and some of the, the mescaline salad mix is starting to pop there too so uh, I got to get my fence up so I made some more phone calls this morning and I found a place in Calgary uh, Phoenix Phoenix posts Phoenix fencing um, and they got what I'm looking for at a pretty decent price so we're gonna drive down there on Friday to go get 40 of those and yeah you'll see in the video here a little later I got some deer fencing that I ordered years ago that's sitting in another shed I'm gonna pull that out and make sure that those are hundred foot lengths because I don't remember um, how long they are so I got to make sure I got enough fencing right so no point in putting up the posts well, I'll get the post up. Got to make sure I have enough fencing. Uh, and then the other thing we're going to work on here today is our uh, John Deere 240. So this is like a early 90s tractor. Uh, my parents actually owned this when I was growing up. So I was a kid when I was mowing the lawn with this thing. So she's got lots of hours, but um, I broke this, uh, and that is the tension spring to basically give this device um, a spring load, so it's not oops, my hands over there um, spring load, so it's not uh, all the way to the bottom. So basically, it'll allow it to float. I mentioned it before. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll I'm gonna take this up to the house now and try taking it apart. Hopefully I don't have to cut it. I'm hoping to uh, WD-40 and unscrew it. And then I've like I said I had to I had to buy the replacement part on eBay out of the U.S. So couldn't find anything up here in Canada and John Deere stopped making these parts years ago so now it's a fight to keep the thing alive right anyway stay with me I'll show you what I'm doing bright sunny day Jeez. it's good it's about time right so we got it off um, well I got this part off in two pieces uh, not supposed to be this is what it's supposed to look like um, the handle screws into the end here and this is actually what I broke was the uh, this nut is welded onto the back of the the spring and I and I busted it off the back of the spring and then it wouldn't unscrew so I had to cut it but uh, now that I've kind of been underneath the lawn more I can't I don't have the tools to get this thing, this lawnmower, up off the ground and work underneath it. So we're going to load it up and take it to a friend. Um, his uh, his boys getting into the mechanics and doing quite a bit of great work. So uh, we'll give him a call later today and see if they want to work on this or not. Make it easy for me, right? I can carry on and I've got sprinkler issues 
Um, we have the impact sprinklers up on a T-post and they'll go one way but they won't go back and I'm not sure why and it's both sprinkler heads. Now when I initially set them up there was enough pressure and it, and it did both ways. Um, so I don't know, I gotta sit down and take it apart I guess and see if I broke something or adjusted something that I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna go uh, pull out my deer fence and see how long that stuff is. Come with me, let's go take a look. Alrighty, so I found the, uh, the deer fence, we got it from Lee Valley. Uh, see that the wind is coming in here it's probably gonna rain on me but it's seven feet by a hundred feet seven feet by a hundred feet three-quarter inch mesh um, UV resistant high density polyethylene lightweight uh, suitable for covering plants and shrubs in winter to prevent grazing to tears deer rabbits and other unwelcome guests so it's, uh, so I got 400 feet, so that'll be lots to do this garden, oh, piece of plastic. Alrighty, here's the last little clip here for the day. So right here is the lumber for our Joel Soliton style chicken tractor. So these are roughly going to be... Um, 8 feet by 12 feet and we're going to be able to house up to 75 birds in each and I'm building two uh, and then whatever the height is I can't remember it's I think it's 60 centimeters is what it is and then uh, the lid on the thing is going to consist of half of it being uh, tin so I've I've got some old tin off of uh, our addition from a couple years ago when I redid the roof. Um, so half of it's going to be tin and then on the other half it's going to be divided into two pieces. One that's going to have a lid uh, that's going to be tin that I'm going to be able to pull off. And then the other side is going to be mesh and I'm going to make it so I can take it off too so that we've got access to um, getting in to the tractor for feeding and watering and then at the end of the season when we need to capture them um, so that we can take them to the butchers so yeah chicks show up tomorrow and I'll show you uh, I'll record that and we'll get that posted too um, because in what I've done to keep it as cheap as cheap can be is um, with my wife's ability to uh, be creative, um, the grocery stores use watermelon boxes, and these things are like five feet square, and then they stand like 20 inches, 24 inches tall, um, and they crush them down and throw them out. So they, we catch them before they do that. So we've got two. And then we'll put uh, 50 chicks in each one of those boxes uh, until they're three weeks old. And then we'll put them outside in these tractors. Uh, yeah, so the chicks show up tomorrow. And the water well driller is showing up tomorrow uh, to pull the casing out of the water well and fix and repair that. Because we've got issues with our water well to add up to uh, other things that are going on around here. Um, yeah, and I told you about the lawn tractor. I got the belt for the rototiller, so maybe I'll go grab the belt and that'll be easy enough to slap on. I had to order that on eBay too. I couldn't find that in Canada for some reason. Um, the machine was bought from PV Mart. Um, probably like 30 years ago by my grandfather and then uh, yeah like, I mean the thing is in tip-top shape it's phenomenal it's been covered storage and indoors and stuff like that so it's things like new uh, what else is going on around here 
Yeah, the fencing. We're going to get that up on the weekend. I got the deer fence. Wife is picking up uh, tie wire. So we can tie that on. Um, things are coming along pretty good. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful, beautiful spring day. So, if you guys are enjoying um, the updates, I know I, I don't record uh, my workload and what I'm doing and stuff like that. Uh, I don't have the equipment to do that right now. I, I broke my tripod, and so I've got nothing to really use out here. So that, that has proven to be rather difficult. So I'm just doing the work, kind of showing you what I've done, uh, how, how it turned out, stuff like that. And then, yeah, we'll get things figured out here. So if you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good weekend.